kadang-kadang ya bisa menyakitkan, bisa menyenangkan gitu. Lep banyak juga kadang-kadang di damen remi semua udah kita sekali judi judi deh saya judi lebih banyak juga nggak bisa Addiction is a brain disease characterized by continued use or engagement in a behavior despite harmful consequences. Or in other words, you keep doing something over and over despite it screwing up your life. And when you take that definition in mind, it means things like work, exercise, food, video games, gambling, stock trading, real estate, dating. Because all these things are natural human behavior that are rewarding. We do it in order to survive or to enjoy our lives. But taken to an extreme where it becomes unhealthy, where it causes them damage to themselves or to their families or to society, that's not normal. That's not conventional. That is the state of addiction. What happens to the brain when people gamble? And it starts with the anticipation of gambling. So you can imagine like before going to a wedding or a concert or a big sporting event, we're excited, we're alert, our dopamine is, is flowing. It's the anticipation of the moment that starts the release of neurochemicals. Then there's the actual moment itself. So imagine inside the concert, hearing your favorite song and singing along. And we know that that interaction is enough to stimulate in your brain and in your mind feelings of good pleasure. It's the same thing with gambling, and what we hear a lot of folks who enjoy gambling, they go inside the casino or inside the betting shop or wherever they gamble, and all the stimulation of that gambling environment, the lights, the sounds, the people, the smells, the uh, things they see, stimulates in their brain activity. So it makes sense that things like behaviors can and do uh, cause physical changes in the brain or actually physical reactions in the brain. Mm -hmm. And it took us a long time to realize that. We said, well, how is it that when you play a slot machine that you enjoy it? And then when you actually talk to gamblers, they describe, well, we enjoy everything about it. The driving to the uh, casino, the thinking about gambling in between visits, the actual gambling itself. And paradoxically, even when they lose, they just say, well, I almost won. And that, for some people, is almost as enjoyable as actually winning, the, what we call the near-miss experience of gambling. There's probably not a single continent uh, or even country that doesn't have cockfighting or some sort of version of it actually occurring. Um, it's a game. But for many cultures, my belief and opinion is that it's more than just a game. It's part of the culture. Um, I think about American culture, what are our versions of sports that we're so passionate about. It's the conventional sports that we see in America that we play from birth. Basketball, baseball, soccer, football, golf, tennis, track and field. And we have an undying passion for those sports. I think it's the same way in a lot of other countries in terms of cockfighting. The difference, I think, what makes cockfighting so passionate in a lot of folks is yes, the gambling and the betting is a huge part of it, but I think it also taps into the cultural psyche about the well-being, about the future, about manhood, about statesmanship, leadership, competition, and skill. And by skill I mean the ability to raise the cock, the ability to develop the sharp knives and, and the training that goes into it. And again, ultimately why we're drawn to games is that we don't know how it's going to end. So I don't record baseball games and watch them on TV when I know the result. I mean, it's fairly boring. Part of the thrill of watching live sports is you don't know how it's going to end. I think in no other sport, uh, that's why combat sports are so fascinating. It's very cut and dry. It's black or white. There's a winner and there's a loser. And Unlike other combat sports like boxing or MMA where there's judges, 
And even there, there's some questionable with the judges, you know, decision. Cockfighting is probably the most purest of the absolute combat sport there is. It's life and death, and that's it. And I think there's something very pure about that that drives people's attention. And then you layer on top of that gambling, and suddenly, and you layer on top of that competition and a community intensity, and suddenly you have a really potent mix of a behavior that you can't turn your eyes away from. Addiction is more than just a biological condition, it's a human condition. But we also have to remember there's a huge component of social root causes, cultural causes that contribute to addiction that also prevent addiction but also probably fuel it there as well. So we began to realize that there are a lot of cultural factors that impact gambling. Now in the Asian cultures, and predominantly we're talking about the Chinese culture, Japanese culture, uh, Southeast Asian cultures, uh, Korean cultures, is that there's a central theme of gambling is not only acceptable as a behavior, number one, but then number two, it's expected. And that for some households, they promote gambling as a rites of passage. They say gambling is a way of testing your fate. Gambling is a way of acceptable way of earning money. So then there were all these small cultural factors that were being uh, driven out that eventually led us to understand these are some of the reasons why people have more demand for gambling among the Asian cultures. But what we learned is, you know, it's a little bit dangerous to say, oh, all Asians gamble, all Asians love gambling, because that's not always true. And lots of other cultures, ethnicities also love gambling there as well. But yet the story was that when we'd go around Los Angeles or California or then casinos throughout America, the story would be the same. Higher numbers of Asian gamblers inside those casinos. Casino buses in Asian communities picking up Asians and driving them to the casinos. Uh, concerned by communities saying why are our communities being targeted with more Asian like gambling. But a central demand for gambling by Asian communities. So, it's an example where culture leads to increased participation in certain behavior and in some results therefore increase risk for that gambling addiction. So these are fascinating things and when you add in the mix of cultural values and family values and unique things there, it comes to a whole other uh, layer. And a lot of the Asian gamblers that we work with talk about that concept of fate. You know, it's all predetermined whether I'm going to win or I'm going to lose. Ancestors have a destiny for me. So when we ask them, well, why do you gamble then? Well, the gambling is a window, a telescope, if you will, into my fates to try and let me know what's coming. And the response is that I say, well, but if it's all predetermined, why do you want to know? And ultimately it's like, well, because I want to know my future, and that's what's driven. And it's fascinating because it has nothing to do about winning or losing, it has nothing to do about escape, it's about removing the uncertainty of our future. And for some people and some cultures, that's a big deal. To say, hey, even though I don't know how long I have to live, I don't know what my future holds, just knowing my future is a very powerful skill, a very powerful notion to have. And even if I can't change it, just having that knowledge is powerful and, and, and reinforcing.